Hi everyone, my name is Brooke and I'm a geologist. Today, me and Sarah, who's a plant scientist, went rock hounding at Sands End, North Yorkshire, UK. Walked along the beach, looking at all the different rocks and all of the pebbles that wash up and all of the pebbles that wash out of the glacial boulder clay that were brought across the North Sea and from the northern parts of the British Isles by the glaciers thousands and thousands of years ago. So let's have a look and see what we found. To get to Sands End, we walked west from Whitby as the tide was going out along the vast expanse of Upgang Beach. There's Whitby in the distance to the east. Lots of this fluffy sea foam about. It was a glorious, stormy January day. <laughs> Look at it go. Oh, it was hilarious. I spent ages laughing at it. Uh, Sarah thought I was daft. Actually, Sarah enjoyed it as well. She thinks the sea foam was just as fun, much fun as I did. So there's me walking along the beach. That's Whitby in the distance. Those cliffs are early Jurassic marine sediments and middle Jurassic fluvio estuarine sediments. They dip down so into an antiform. So the youngest rocks are coming down towards sea level and these rounded mounds next to me on the landward side, they're actually glacier clay from about 10 to 15,000 years ago, maybe as far back as 20,000 years ago. And that's what's coming into down to sea level that we're going to look at. And there's Sarah and her cheeky chops walking backwards and that's Sands End in the distance just to the left of her head and more early Jurassic rocks sticking out. So there's a big fault along here and then the, well, there's a number of big faults and then an antiform. And so that's like a, a big dip downwards where the young curving structure, where the youngest rocks are in the middle. But we'll see the big fault in a moment. <laughs> there's Sarah trying to look mean. She just can't manage it. <laughs> So here's the fault where the Jurassic rocks completely disappear under the sand and then we've got this huge whacking pile of boulder clay for several uh, kilometres. And you can see it's in different layers and there's erosion surfaces and bedding planes and all of the usual lovely sedimentary structures in it. And they represent different sequences of sea level changes and glacier advance and retreat. And these have sampled rocks from all these glacial erratics from all over uh, northern Europe. So here's some nice local Jurassic limestone, lots of different bits and pieces there from up on the moors from Scotland, even some bits from Greenland and Scandinavia people are found in here. And the different colours are because of different compositions because there were different environments at the time. You notice there's a lot of sand coming down the cliff and that's because there's raised beaches up there. There's one there, you can see a few of them actually, those yellow sandy beaches and they're full of uh, seashells. And that's because when the glaciers were sat on the UK, they pressed it down. So even though sea level was lower, the land surface was also much lower as well. And then as the glaciers retreated, you're getting rebound so England's tilting so that the southeast is dipping down and getting lower and the northwest is tilting upwards. This rock's really cool it's uh, a bit of limestone or marble I think or, or recrystallized limestone basically and all of these lines on it are glacial striations from when it was carried by a glacier ground over the, the ground surface. We've got lots of industrial archaeological heritage here as well. So Sarah's found this big bit of industrial slag and this is from where the iron, local Jurassic iron stone was smelted down and then the iron was extracted and then the stuff that was left over, which is mostly carbonate and phosphorus, was formed into these human-made anthropogenic limestones. Here's some beautiful carboniferous corals probably carried down from the Pennines. These I think are Syringopora or Lithostrotion, but they're super, super common all over Western Europe in these early Carboniferous limestones. Fantastic stuff. Not quite sure what this structure is called in glacial terms, but it looks like what you'd call a, a TP structure in carbonate in classic sedimentology. So basically, I think what's happened is the ground has frozen and then the water has pushed up and deformed and buckled the overlying glacial mud into this kind of a tent folded shape. It, it didn't look like a sedimentary structure or and it's certainly not tectonic because this is not being faulted or, or tectonized in any way so maybe the glacial peeps can help me out here's a trace of a rock that used to be around here but isn't anymore so this is cretaceous chalk from the late cretaceous and these to be deposits in this area but they've mostly all been eroded away but there's loads of chunks of it left in the glacial till so we can get to see a rock that's no longer there by finding bits of it in the glacial clay. Here's some of that iron stone with some nice septarium carbonate filled cracks. 
this is from the earliest Jurassic and it's lower grade than the stuff that was mined from the Plains Bacchian stage. Here's another bit of that earliest Jurassic ironstone and this one's got a limestone on top that's chock full of shells so it tells us which way was up and up is to the top in this bit. What Sarah found here, something that she's quite excited about. Look at all those crinoids. So this is a bit of carboniferous limestone, had nice sedimentary structures in it. So whacked it open, collected some bits and bagged them to take them back. But look at that, all those crinoids and nice sedimentary structures and organic rich ripples in it as well. Very nice. That's going to polish up nicely. Can't wait to get that finished. The bits I'm pointing at are either sea urchin spines or fish bones, nearly at sand's end. Now look at all these pebbles. If you're into rock tumbling, you'd love this place because the sea's done half the work for you. Look at them all. Look how round they are. A lot of them are mudstone, so they'd probably just disintegrate pretty quickly. But there's lots of other harder crystalline rocks in here that had survived tumbling. So here's some nice cinematic shots of that stormy January sea washing up in slow motion on the beaches with all of those pebbles. It's really no mystery as to why I became a geologist growing up in a place like this. What does puzzle me though is why most why more people don't end up getting into geology because it's everywhere. So here's the cute little village of Sands End and in the distance we can see the black shales. This is the early Jurassic black shales from the mass extinction. So we're going to talk about them in another video because they're really cool and exciting and have lots of good fossils in too. So there we go. I hope you've enjoyed looking at the, the different kind of rocks that we found on Sands End Beach. And if you're ever in the UK or in the north of England, then you can go to Sands End and you've got an idea of the kinds of things you might find now. Have you been out rock hounding lately and found any good things? Let me know in the comments or in the community tab. If you've got any questions, stick them in the comments below. If there's anything you want me to make a video about that's earth science or geology related, let me know and I can have a go at making that video for you. We've got some shirts now available. We've got these Proterozoic Park ones and the with the Uid ones. If there's any shirt designs that you'd like, let me know and I can make them available. And there'll be more coming up in the future featuring things like trilobites and ammonites and other cool geological stuff. And until then, have fun looking for rocks and fossils yourselves, rock nerds. See you later. Bye-bye. And we certainly had a good time collecting them. Had a nice time, just in general, really. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, children. <laughs> Date agent. What the fuck? <laughs> Those of you who made it back ashore after the tide came in. Oh, my God. Always... If you want to subscribe, you'll... Don't forget to subscribe to check out... something. <laughs> <laughs> By Odin's Mighty Beard. Stuff. <laughs>